friends right now we are going to study the anomalous behavior of uh, the uh, second period uh, elements which are also called as representative elements and uh, the other elements uh, which are uh, belonging to the other uh, periods of the periodic table now uh, there is a reason behind the anomalous behavior but as of now before going to the reason of the anomalous behavior first of all let us look at what the anomalous behavior is in the case of uh, the second period elements if in case we write it down it will be as follows let's write it down so in the case of second period elements it you know that it starts with lithium and after lithium uh, in the second period we go to uh, beryllium right now we know that uh, lithium will come in group number 1 beryllium will come under group number 2 after that we have uh, you know directly then group number 13 wherein we will be having in group number 13 we will be having a uh, boron which is present again group number 14 there will be carbon which is present again group number 15 we will be having a uh, nitrogen which is present group number 16 we will be having oxygen which is present group number 17 we will be having a uh, fluorine which is present as of now we will not be talking about the noble gases in this specific case so right now we will be dealing with uh, these second period elements belonging to all these different groups now if in case we compare their uh, properties with the group uh, with the period 3 elements let us see what we get so this is the second period elements let us look at the third period elements in the case of the third period element we have uh, you know after after fluorine and then neon we will be having the third period element starting from sodium as we already know then we have uh, magnesium then after magnesium we have uh, in again group number uh, 13 we will be having uh, aluminum right after aluminum we will be having silicon then we will be having phosphorus sulfur and then chlorine in a similar way now we also know their respective atomic numbers which we can uh, quickly write it down So in the case of lithium, we have atomic number three. Beryllium atomic number four. Then uh, boron, it is five, six, seven, eight, nine. In a similar way, in sodium, we start with eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen. Now, after we uh, finish this, uh, right now, what we are going to study will be the anomalous behavior in terms of uh, the properties of lithium. Uh, being very different from the uh, properties of the remaining elements of the group even beryllium to some extent uh, and boron to other extent also uh, follows this rule see normally what we associate associate with the al uh, alkali metals is that they will all only form uh, highly ionic compounds wherein the chances of it for, uh, forming covalent compounds is uh, very very less right because of their very high value of electropositivity or the other way around the very less value of electronegativity because their electronegativities are very less they will have a tendency of forming highly ionic compounds with those uh, type of elements like fluorine chlorine etc oxygen which have high electronegativity values however it is observed that lithium the uh, second group elements they break this rule that is uh, the alkali metal like uh, lithium alkaline earth metal like beryllium it breaks this rule of it of uh, all the alkali metals and alkaline earth metals forming mostly all all ionic compounds in the case of lithium and beryllium they break this rule it is observed that lithium forms uh, a kind of covalent uh, bonds also even beryllium forms covalent bonds even boron forms covalent bonds to some extent so why is it now this is called as a anomalous behavior anomalous behavior means a type of behavior which is very different from the behavior which is shown by the other elements present in that particular group my dear friend let us go to the basics the fundamentals of the periodic table of this chapter itself periodicity of elements is that all the elements which are present in a particular group all of them should be having the same physical and chemical properties right however this rule is broken by lithium in the case of alkali metals by beryllium in the case of alkaline earth metals also to some extent the other elements which are present in that particular period like boron carbon nitrogen oxygen etc let us now look first of all what uh, happens like if in case lithium's uh, 
properties are different from that of sodium in that case uh, to which elements properties does lithium's properties co coincide with so it has been found out that there is something which is called as a diagonal relationship let's write it down there is something which is called as a diagonal relationship which basically means my dear friends that uh, we know what is the meaning of a di diagonal right so in a similar way uh, if in case we have a rectangle the diagonal uh, joins the opposite to vertices in a similar way here in the case of uh, the second and the third period elements lithium it has a diagonal relationship with magnesium which basically means that the uh, chemical properties of lithium and the chemical reactions which uh, lithium undergoes is quite similar to the uh, chemical properties which uh, magnesium undergoes. In a similar way, we can also say that uh, the uh, chemical properties which beryllium undergoes is also very uh, similar to that of aluminium. So this basically means that the uh, there is a kind of diagonal relationship wherein we, we have uh, the uh, properties of uh, the second period elements which are very uh, similar to the properties of the third period elements however the relationship is crossed which basically means that here the alkali metal and here there is the alkaline earth metal whose properties are very much similar to each other now let us uh, look at uh, what might be the possible reasons for this so there can be some specific reasons and there can be some general reasons let us first go into the specific reasons for the same. So what are the reasons? Let us write it down. What are the reasons for this anomalous behavior? The first reason for this anomalous behavior can be given by saying that the, uh, the, the reason for uh, these anomalous behavior uh, wherein we have uh, the alkali and alkaline earth metals which are affected by this will be obviously that the in the case of uh, alkali metals and alkaline earth metals we know because their atomic numbers is so less their size is very small right so therefore the first reason is because of their small size the second reason will be in their case will be that their electronegativities are very less we know that the electronegativity of uh, lithium is uh, very less and again the electronegativity of sodium is also less and as we go from up to down we have studied this the electronegativity keeps on uh, decreasing in the case of lithium the electronegativity is 1 in the case of sodium it is 0 0.9 so basically because the electronegativity of these elements are very very less it has a very important role to play in the anomalous behavior of uh, these elements so therefore let's write down it is also attributed to the electro negativity when i say electronegativity i mean to say low electronegativity values when i when i uh, show an arrow downwards it means low when i show an arrow upwards it means high so the third reason will be a very uh, uh, means a very different value for the charge to size ratio the charge to size ratio of these elements are very different from uh, that of the rest of the elements of the periodic table so uh, that these three are very important factors which contribute to the anomalous uh, behavior now let us uh, look into the specific reasons why we will uh, why we have uh, such a behavior the first specific reason is that in the case of uh, the second period elements we can uh, we understand that there are total number of uh, four uh, electrons that can be filled right so in the case of uh, the second period elements uh, we know that uh, let's write it down the electronic configuration of say in the case of second period elements it is uh, we can have it as uh, 2s2 and then 2p6 as the maximum electronic configuration so if in case we show the orbitals in the case of s we have one orbital in the case of p we know that we have a total of three orbitals so this is one this is two this is three so because in the case of uh, p a subshell we have three orbitals in the case of s subshell we have got one orbital so in total we have got four orbitals in the case of uh, the uh, second period elements 
like uh, lithium beryllium from here till uh, fluorine neon however if in case we talk about the uh, third period elements their situation is very different wherein we can in the case of uh, third period elements we can start with uh, 3s2 and then we can go to uh, 3p6 however there is uh, also a third type of subshell which is involved which is 3d subshell which can accommodate a total number of electrons which is equal to 10 and because we have 3d subshell in the case of uh, the third period elements that is the reason why lot of uh, lone pair of electrons can be accommodated here so if in case we show their orbitals uh, it can be shown as follows i am drawing their orbitals below it so in the case of 3s we, we have only one orbital in the case of 3p as we have already shown above we will be having total number of three orbitals which will be present here right and finally in the case of 3d we will be having total number of orbitals which will be equal to 5. So this is the first orbital, this is second orbital, third orbital, fourth orbital and fifth orbital. Now each orbital my dear friends can be used for accommodating a lone pair of uh, electrons. Now my dear friends a lone pair of electron is formed only in the case when coordinate covalent bonds are formed. We know what is the meaning of a coordinate covalent bond right. In the case of a coordinate covalent bond which you have already studied in the uh, chapter I hope so of uh, the uh, chemical bonding so in that chapter you have studied that there is something which is called as a coordinate covalent bond which has exactly the same properties or extremely similar properties to that of a covalent bond it's just that the formation of the bond is slightly different wherein in the case of a covalent bond both the combining atoms they contribute one one electrons uh, each to the bond hence there will be two electrons in the bond in the case of a coordinate covalent bond the two electrons which are required for the formation of a covalent bond is supplied by only one of the combining atoms and that is the reason why we have a slight difference in how a, co a coordinate covalent bond forms and how a normal covalent bond forms however the properties as i have told you are very much similar so as uh, as i was trying to tell you in the case of uh, the third period elements we have many number of orbitals which are available for bonding so here we have got one and then plus 3 which is 4, 4 plus 5 total number of orbitals which are available for bonding is equal to 9 and whatever extra number of orbital uh, a particular atom has their lone pair of electrons can be accommodated when, when a coordinate covalent bond is formed. So when we say that in the case of lithium as well as in the case of beryllium there will be a, a type of covalent character uh, which uh, will be involved that will be because in the case of lithium and beryllium it does not have those many number of orbitals which is present in the case of the uh, third period elements in the case of third period elements we have uh, many number of orbitals which are available for bonding next will be in the case of uh, these uh, elements we have uh, maximum number of uh, covalent bonds which can be formed here is equal to 4 here in the case of uh, D as you can see it can form many number of uh, bonds however in the case of uh, the second period elements we have uh, you know elements like uh, boron it forms bonds with uh, with fluorine with uh, with electronegative atoms like fluorine uh, forming only BF4 minus because it has four number of orbitals which are available wherein four uh, coordinate covalent bonds uh, can be formed wherein we have here four bonds can be formed however if in case we consider the case of aluminium aluminium can form uh, bonds uh, compounds like alf6 minus 3 which basically means that here uh, total number of uh, six bonds are formed with six fluorine atoms here the number of bonds formed is you know uh, which is possible is very very high again the the next factor here will be the uh, role of uh, the multiple uh, bonds which can be formed uh, in the case of pi electrons like in the case of uh, group 2 elements we know that uh, carbon it can form multiple pi bonds with uh, the other carbon atoms as well as the other uh, atoms or elements which are belonging to the second period itself like to give you examples my dear friends we will be having carbon which forms uh, we know that triple bond with other carbon atom wherein two bonds will be pi bonds 
In a similar way, carbon also forms double bond with another carbon atom, wherein one is a sigma bond and one bond is a pi bond. In a similar way, we know that carbon forms triple bonds, forming cyanide or isocyanide, wherein in the case of isocyanide, there will be n triple bond C, wherein we will be having uh, you know multiple pi bonds which are formed between carbon as well as between other uh, atoms or other elements. In a, also, it forms uh, bonds with say for example oxygen in the case of uh, carbonyl group wherein carbon forms different bonds with oxygen as well we also have different element like nitrogen it having uh, you know a different number of pi electrons involved in covalent bonds with other nitrogen atoms so as you can see my dear friends we have uh, this property wherein uh, there will be a bond which is formed by there will be a bond pi bonds which are formed between the uh, different atoms of uh, different elements as well as the atoms of the same element itself and that will be uh, mostly be found in the case of the second period elements. So all these factors my dear friends contribute to the anomalous behavior that we observe between the elements of uh, especially the electropositive elements of uh, the group 2 of the period 2 elements and the uh, other elements the electropositive elements of uh, belonging to the same uh, group of the third as well as the other uh, period elements.